Hello Curious Minds, I'm Miles Maxer and welcome back to the Ant Network. Today we're going on another Ant Explorer adventure here in Montana. Today we're checking out the Gallatin National Forest and we're going to try and find some ants, maybe collect some for the lab, and also see what kind of other living creatures inhabit this forest ecosystem. Let's check it out. Here, this thing is wicked. Secure some brood. We've come to Swan Creek in Montana for our final expedition before snow blankets the region. Fall can be a great time to collect founding queens and established colonies, and we're hoping to get some today before winter restricts our activities to the laboratory. Tremendous. I think this might be a new state record for Montana. This is a fantastic little formica species. We have representatives of the workers, a queen, and a male. So we've got the full cast set here. Yes. We're taking a look at a really gorgeous uh, small formica species here. I'm not familiar with what it is, but uh, you can see there's quite a few of them running around. If you look right here, you can see a worker carrying a pupa. And that pupa is actually going to eclose and become a callow worker today. Uh, you can tell because of its dark color. Now, eclosing is the technical term for when an ant hatches from the pupal stage into an adult worker ant. All right, so this right here is a very common predator for ants. This is a tiger beetle. Tiger beetles are some of the most uh, voracious predators in uh, insect ecosystems in North America. And this is a very large one, particularly for Montana in our region. I'm not sure what species it is, but this is just an amazing animal, really coming to the end of its lifespan at this point in time. So underneath here, we've got a cocooned moth. This will actually overwinter and then hatch out in the spring, begin its life cycle. Sometimes you have to get as high as you can to get a good vantage point of the area around you. And sometimes you can even see the ant nests better from this point of view. Uh, but not in this case, so we're gonna head down the trail a little bit farther. So I just uncovered a large carpenter ant queen. Now this is definitely not the season for carpenter ants in terms of nuptial flights. This queen would have flown earlier in the year and would have likely tried to start her own colony. Unfortunately, there don't seem to be any workers represented here. So she maybe was unsuccessful in founding a colony. She looks nice and fat though. So it's very possible that she'll overwinter and actually give it another go. And uh, we're gonna wish her all the best in that. I'm gonna very carefully replace this rock, return her to her chamber there, and uh, we'll get on our way. Well, we had a lot of success flipping this rock, so we might as well give this one a shot too. Okay, we have a small laceous queen who's trying to duck away from us. An earthworm and a millipede. We'll try and get that Laceus Queen safely uncovered here. What we're gonna do is blow on her a little bit just to uncover her. Here she is right here. We also over here have a pretty good sized millipede, at least for Montana standards. Millipedes are detritivores. They eat on decaying matter, often plant matter, and they're not nearly as dangerous as their centipede relatives. 
Another common attribute of millipedes at this size is a frequent behavior that they show where they will actually roll themselves up into a ball. There we go, just like that. And I'm not hurting this animal at all. It's just in a, uh, a defensive uh, behavior right there. And as you can see, it's gonna keep on walking along. So we're a little short on vials right now, and I'm combining the Aphenogaster queens that we've collected today, because this is a polygonous species that can tolerate more than one queen in a colony. So they'll be just fine in this vial for a couple of hours before we get back to the lab. Now, I did lose a Formica queen, and here she goes running. So now, since I have an empty vial, I'll be able to collect her as well. Excellent, and here she is. Oop, come right down there, miss. Although many ants are known for their extraordinary architecture, there's also quite a few of them that are kind of lazy. And one of the best ways to find those kinds of ants is under the bark on a fallen log. Now, if you carefully peel away bark, you can sometimes find cavities that the ants are nesting in. And this requires very little effort from them. They just have to clear them out a little bit. Sometimes they're left over from termites or beetles, but it's a great way to find cavity nesting ants like temnothorax or leptothorax or even some formica species. Some areas like this one are just absolutely gorgeous, but they're not necessarily the best places to look for ants. Hillsides like this that are very dry and have rocks that are deeply embedded into the ground usually aren't the best places to find ants, but it's a great place to really kind of pull yourself back and enjoy nature around you. Oh, okay. This is making more sense now. I thought these were all queens because of their size. This is Camponotus vicinus. I haven't seen this species in Montana before, but they're very, very common in North Idaho. The Western Red Carpenter Ant is one of my favorite ant species in the Northwest, and it is the only polygonous Camponotus species in the United States and Canada. Polygonous ants can have more than one viable queen in their colonies, while monogamous ants only have a single mated queen. Well, we've descended significantly from the area that we were previously where it was too dry. And what's kind of interesting is that right now we are on sort of the dry side of this river. There's a lot of rocky areas, quite a bit of dry soil. But if we take a look right across this little creek, we have a forest that's been overtaken by a moss understory. It's highly likely that there are going to be quite a few ant species represented there that we haven't seen on the rest of our hike here today. What we're going to try to do is find a way to cross this creek safely. Don't know if we're gonna be able to do that or not. Safety has always gotta be your number one priority when you're out doing these kinds of things. Luckily, we found a fallen tree that aided us in crossing the creek. Unfortunately, I was wrong, and the habitat was so waterlogged that there were no ants present. Surprisingly, I was visited by a friendly bumblebee that was attracted to the sweat on my shirt. We then encountered this boreal chorus frog before we headed back to finish our hike on the drier side of the creek. As you're walking along in the forest or even in other environments, keeping a close eye on the ground as you walk can be really important to spotting established ant colonies and even queens that are running around after a nuptial flight. Right here we have a small mound of a Manica species. This is probably Manica hunteri. We've got a worker right here that's going to be disposing of some trash from the nest. Manica are well known for their, their small circular mounds. And if you look under here, you'll find a thriving colony of usually about 300 individuals. Ooh, check this out. And a very small yellow queen ant right here. And I just sucked her up. Oh, this is a beautiful ant. 
This appears to be a small Solenopsis molesta queen. These are known as thief ants, and this species actually generally inhabits other ant nests. They secretly live in other ant nests, and their diminutive size and ability to mask themselves in the ant nest in the other ants' pheromones allow them to stay sort of as stowaways and steal from their, their food stores and even predate on the other ant species' brood. So we're looking at a very large Myrmica colony here. They're known actually as the native fire ant or the North American fire ant, and that's just because they have pretty painful stings. This is quite a good sized colony. There's most likely multiple queens down deeper in the nest. And you can see quite a few of the workers are evacuating a brood that were under the rock. And they're, move, they're trying to move it underground. Uh, and they'll do so once we return the rock to where we flipped it from. All right, folks, it's time to conclude our adventure here in the Gallatin National Forest and head back to the lab to take a closer look at the ants that we collected today. We are back at the lab. It has been a little while since our visit at Swan Creek, and now is the perfect time to take a look at some of the ant queens that we collected while we were there. First up, let's check out our thief ant queen, the Solenopsis molesta. We're now at our microscope station, getting ready to take a look at our Solenopsis molesta queen. Remember, these thief ants are some of the smallest ants in North America, so we really need to take a look at her under the microscope. Using the microscope, we can check and see if our queens have any eggs or signs of illness. Of course, this queen doesn't have any brood because she's been undergoing diapause, which is sort of like hibernation, but for ants and other insects. During diapause, queens will not usually have eggs if they haven't started a colony, but they will begin to produce them in the spring. Now we're going to take a look at our Aphenogaster occidentalis colony. These are a seed harvesting ant found throughout the western United States, and this colony actually has two queens. We started this colony from two queens that we collected at Swan Creek. We placed them together in this test tube, and they've actually raised a nice incipient colony. There are a couple of large larvae here, there's a pile of eggs, and they have raised one worker so far. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Ant Explorer. It is now winter here in Montana, and we're going to be changing our focus to producing videos here in the laboratory until it warms back up. We're going to be making things like ant keeping uh, product reviews, ant keeping tutorials, and that kind of content. But don't worry, because this spring we'll be back with more episodes of The Ant Explorer. Thank you for watching.